Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to cover everything you would ever need to know about data partitioning. Um, so just kind of an expansion on my previous videos on your know, data partitioning versus uh, other methods of segmenting your data. And so today I really just want to go deep and talk about, hey, these are, or just first give you a basic, basic overview of data partitioning just to set the stage, but then go through a ton of different ways that you can use data partitioning within your workflows or data partitioning strategies, templates that you can steal, you can use within your own company um, and just eliminate that work of trying to figure out, hey, what is the right way to do data, data partitioning and lean on the backs of others who have already been doing this uh, themselves. So without further ado, let's get into it. So at its most basic level, data partitioning is a technique used in database management systems to distribute data across multiple storage devices, multiple nodes, or multiple servers. And the primary goal of partitioning is to improve the performance, the scalability, and the manageability of the database by breaking down those large data sets into smaller, more manageable pieces. Then each partition can be processed independently, which enables parallel processing and reduces the load on a single storage unit because now you can have many different storage units working in parallel to process this data and you kind of remove that bottleneck. And so this is in contrast to another technique that sometimes people mistake data partitioning with, which is data replication. So data replication involves creating copies of data across multiple nodes and servers. And while they both ensure high availability and fault tolerance, uh, replication is copying that data directly rather than just a chunk of that data. However, you can combine them to bring, uh, bring basically partitioning in for distributing the load and having you know, all these different servers working in unison, and then replication provides redundancy. So in this case, what you'd probably have is like one master node that is you know, your single source of truth and then you can go back and compare that to those various partitions. Uh, if one of those partitions fails, then the replicated data on another node can take over and ensure data availability and reliability here. So now that we have the basics about what partitioning is, let's get into actually how you do it. Um, so the most common type of partition you're doing is with key value data because most databases are key value based or data stored as a collection of key value pairs. So you can partition this in a few different ways. And so the first one I wanna talk about is partitioning by key range. So in partitioning by key range, it would involve dividing data into continuous ranges based on key values. So in this example, each partition holds a specific range of keys. So keys from A to M might be stored in one partition, but keys from N to Z are stored in another. And it's a very straightforward and efficient uh, way to partition for range queries but it can lead to uneven data distribution if the data isn't evenly distributed between those two halves. Maybe everyone in your database has a last name before M, and so that second partition is way less than the first one. Um, so make sure, you know, when you're considering that, hey, is there an even point of distribution that I can segment this data from? Now, a slightly more complicated way to partition uh, is using a hash function. So a hash function, in this example, you know, just dividing it by 16, um, after you know, multiplying by a certain amount of numbers. In, in this example, you basically take your raw value and use a function to distribute it into one of these buckets based on what you know, their salary is, what their age is. Um, and this is a way to kind of get around if unevenly distributed data where you can map keys to different partition identifiers and create a more uniform distribution of data across partitions. Um, and this method helps in balancing the load and reducing hotspots, but can make range queries less efficient since data is distributed non-sequentially. So I also just mentioned kind of two different uh, terms there that I need to also explain. So skewed workloads and hotspots. So in some scenarios, a certain partition can receive a disproportionate amount of traffic and that leads to skewed workloads and hotspots. And a skewed workload and hotspot, they're referring to the same thing, just having too much of your data within a single partition relative to the rest of your partitions. Uh, and hotspots can degrade performance and cause bottlenecks if too much data is being sent to a server that isn't equipped to process it. And so some techniques that you can use to relieve hotspots and hash, key, hashing of a key is uh, an example of one, things like dynamic partitioning where partitions are split further as they grow and then you use more advanced hash functions to better distribute the data. Um, so you kind of create partitions of partitions. Uh, and then 
another way, um, or another way you can introduce kind of some advanced logic into our partition is through partitioning and secondary indexes. So here you can see kind of an example of what partitioning with secondary indexes look like, where you have that primary key index, but then you also have a secondary index that is used to improve query performance on non-primary key attributes. So essentially a second set of keys like silver, yellow, Honda, Volvo, um, that allow you to further partition and segment that data. So the server knows, hey, if it's a silver car, it can only be one of these and that doesn't necessarily need to query every single table. Um, and it also just allows you to, again, partition with secondary indexes, have that second degree of partitioning to ensure that you remain efficient and scalable because then you can segment even further based on those secondary indexes. And then additionally, another way you can partition secondary index is by document. So partitioning secondary indexes by document involves storing the index industries between within the same partition as the document they reference. So example here, where you have the secondary indexes partitioned alongside the primary key index. Um, and this approach ensures that index lookups and document retrieval can be performed locally within the same partition. So you don't have cross partition queries and you can improve performance by reducing the amount of routes and different steps that the database needs to take to actually get your data. Um, and then another way you can partition too is by partitioning secondary indexes by term. And in this, in this case, what you do is basically store your index entries based on your indexed attributes value. Um, so here, what? let me go an example up. And so if you're partitioning by those values, you essentially have a second layer of indexes where after it goes to that local index of cars or red cars, then can immediately route it to a red car of your choice. Um, so just another way of, and they're all kind of just similar ways of achieving the same outcome, having a second layer that you can uh, index and partition on uh, in a structured manner. And so almost inevitably, uh, as your data grows, you're gonna need to look at rebalancing your partitions. Um, so your distribution of data, it's probably not gonna remain consistent all over time. So rebalancing partitions is the process of redistributing that data to ensure balanced load and efficient resource utilization. And you have a few different methods for this. Um, there's split and merge, where you split overloaded partitions and then merge, let's say, half of that uh, into an underloaded one. And you can see, you know, merging from one partition to another, uh, or you know, combining two smaller partitions into a single one, and then splitting a second overloaded partition. Uh, you also could adjust your hash function, so use your dynamic hashing to redistribute the data more evenly. Maybe start sending more data through that hash function to the less you, lesser used sectors or partitions, um, and then also just good old data migration. Move data between partitions based on current usage patterns and partition loads. You know, if you're noticing that a mass one partition has in, received tons of data, maybe you just spin up in a secondary database for that. Or migrated to uh, you know, a backup partition or a segment partition where you can say, hey, let's just split this one big partition into two um, and then find a point, a midline within there that would be evenly distributing the load of both of those into their respective single subsystems. So now in terms of the actual methods you would go about doing this, one would be automatic or manual rebalancing where you're either automating or you know, writing a script that says, hey, move you know, overloaded systems, monitor that partition load, and then redistribute the data if that system gets overloaded, maybe by spinning up an additional system or uh, segmenting that into two smaller systems or moving some of that excess data into another node. Um, and this helps to manual, minimize your manual intervention. Obviously, automated systems can break, but it means you don't have to actually be constantly monitoring for uh, you know, any out of uh, space partition loads. And then manual rebalancing, on the other hand, requires administrators to analyze and then adjust partitions based on those their observations of predefined criteria. So in that, as you can imagine, it's more manual. You have to be constantly monitoring your partitions and make sure you, know, you have uh, the right amount of data in the right partitions. So that one can be a, quite a bit harder to actually enact in practice, uh, but is an option. And then you also have request routing. And so request routing is the process of directing client requests to the appropriate partition. Effective re request routing ensures that you know, your queries are handled effectively, your data retrieval times are minimized. And this is again, where you would use things like consistent hashing, uh, lookup tables, or things like directory services as well that can map keys to, or certain sets of keys to certain partitions. Um, and then another way, just like general tip for speeding up your database, parallel query execution. So parallel query execution involves distributing a single query across multiple partitions to be processed simultaneously. 
And this technique leverages the distributed nature of partition data to improve query performance and reduce response times. And so here, each partition pr processes a subset of the query, and then those results are aggregated to produce the final output. Uh, so just a useful tip to have in any partition data system. Uh, but that's really all I had for you all today. Just wanted to kind of give a deep dive on some different ways that you can actually partition your data, the methods in which you do so, and demystify the whole thing a little bit. Uh, so I hope you joined in this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.